the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'll be your host this morning. i going to talk about a couple of issues that are Disturbing, to say the least. You know, we've got a national debt that at this point is roughly $17 trillion. This is a debt which is, for all intents and purposes, been built up by a national government completely and totally, abjectly out of control. They borrow 40 cents on every dollar. And at this present moment, they are monetizing the debt. Now, they, they don't use the phrase monetizing. They use <clears throat> the phrase quantitative easing. However, according to a daily treasury statement that came out on July 12th, the U.S. Treasury is currently subject to a federal legal limit of 16 point nine nine trillion dollars in other words sixteen point seven trillion just just a hair short of that what's amazing is that while the debt grows every single day every moment of every day roughly at the tune of about a billion dollars a billion dollars per day it has not grown for the past fifty six days In fact, for the past 56 days, it has remained, actually it's 57 days at this point, it has remained below the actual debt cap by $25 million. Now, for the record, $25 million is the Senate's rounding error on its lunch tab. I mean, this administration blows through $25 million like poop through a goose. That doesn't even get them started and out of bed in the morning. What's really disturbing about this is that they first hit this public debt subject to congressional and legal limits back on May 17th. And since that day, the debt has not moved or budged one red penny. Now, some would say, well, that's great news. Well, it isn't. What they're doing is artificially keeping the debt below the $16.99 trillion range so that they don't violate the law. But playing around with statistics in an Excel spreadsheet is no excuse nor a justifiable skipping of the law. Realistically, we're some 55 or 57 billion above the legal limit. Because we know that it grows at roughly a a billion dollars a day. That's the, statistically, that's about where it's at. Now, I posted an article up on on our Facebook and on our uh, website that you can see. You can go to americasvoicenow.org and you can take a look at this this, uh, particular article. It's it's from CNS News, charlienovembersierranews.com. I also posted it up on our Facebook page, which you can get to by going to America's Voice Now. uh, I'm sorry, by going to Facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. 
And <clears throat> here's the problem. The latest reports that came out on July 12th, it's always a few days lagging, that the Treasury had redeemed $5.8 uh, billion in debt and issued another $6.7 billion, or $6.5 billion, meaning that what they've done is increase the net debt by $629 billion so far this year. Now, the real problem is when you have a group of federal agencies, and this is more than just the Treasury, this is the Treasury in concert with the Federal Reserve Bank and the new Treasury Secretary, Jack Lew, uh, basically hiding the true nature and the true total of the debt in order to avoid violating the law. If you did that as a corporate CEO of XYZ Company, IBM, Microsoft, Keebler Foods, you could go to jail for that. Because it, what it what it is is it's a conspiracy, and you and and you need to understand that word. It's a conspiracy to violate the law. It's a conspiracy to violate the law by obstructing justice. Now, May eighteen, Secretary Liu sent a letter to the House Speaker, John Boehner. Isn't this interesting, by the way, that you haven't heard about this at all on the mainstream media? The Ministry of Propaganda will never tell you this. In that letter, Lou indicated that the Treasury would begin implementing what he calls the standard set of extraordinary measures that allows the Treasury to continue to borrow and spend even though it is outside the legal debt limit. And here's the amazing part of this. The time when the Congress must vote on a new Treasury debt, or debt limit, I should say, not a Treasury, but on a new debt limit, is coming up. The problem is that they've got to hold this debt at this line until that date. And so they're fraudulently, criminally withholding the true level of the debt by playing and finagling games in an effort to keep from running afoul or hitting the cap and the limit. It won't happen until after Labor Day. The, the vote. So here's what <clears throat> here's what Lou had to say. And I, I get it, this is legalese and it's, you know, but just just ride with me on this one. The effective duration of the extraordinary measures is subject to considerable uncertainty due to a variety of factors, including the unpredictability of tax receipts, changes in expenditures flows under the sequester, and the normal challenges of forecasting the payments and receipts of the U.S. government months into the future. It is now clear that the measures will not be exhausted until after Labor Day. <clears throat> Long and the short of it is, the daily Treasury statement will continue to put this total value of debt subject to the limit at $16.99 trillion, $25 million below the legal limit. And it's going to continue to, to push this lie for the next month and a half. And they've already been at it for a couple of months now. If, and this is according to the letter from Lou, 
if the Treasury, sometime in September, can no longer hold the debt limits or the debt below that limit of, of $16.7 trillion, and then they, the alternative, of course, would be that they'd have to default on the bills of the federal government. Here's where it gets sticky. He also goes on to say that if the Republican-controlled House of Representatives doesn't vote to increase that legal debt limit, then the Treasury will be forcing a battle with the Republican House. While simultaneously, the current continuing resolution is in force. And that runs until September 30th. We are already in default. That's what this means. We have been in default for the past 60 days. What this means is that the government should already be in the process of massive cutbacks of spending. Because we're already at the debt limit. Why is it that the Ministry of Propaganda has not notified you, the American people, the taxpayers, the debt owner, that we are in default? To take it one step further, based on the fact that we're in default, What does this tell you about our current fiscal ability or sovereignty to continue as a running operational nation? Meanwhile, we're giving away a billion dollars to the Egyptians. We don't even know who's going to get it, but we're going to give it away anyway. We're giving them the F-16s. We don't know who's going to get the keys. We're spending money like water. And we're already in default. And Congress isn't even talking about the debt limit increase. It's now become a shell game to hide the true amount of the debt. See, the problem, the problem is that we are, to, to utilize their words, you know, from the green movement who wants sustainable cities, sustainable zoning, sustainable land management, we don't have a sustainable fiscal position in this country. And we haven't for a very long time. If you understand how national debt and treasury work in the Federal Reserve, what essentially happens is the federal government, the treasury, issues an IOU to the Federal Reserve, a private cabal of bankers owned by not the United States of America, not the people, not the government, but a private group of bankers. They, in turn, print money out of nothing because they're printing it based on an IOU promise. What they do is they print bonds and then they sell those bonds and then they take that money that comes in from those bonds and they hand that over to the government minus their piece of the action and there's a whole transaction associated with it with interest that we owe and so forth and so on. It's inserting a banker where none is needed. It's inserting a banker between the banker and the people. And that banker, of course, always gets a piece of the action. The problem is that the Treasury is not responsible to report or even to discuss 
its status with Congress. I mean, we don't even have an opportunity or a right to know, according to them, what they're up to. Bernanke faces a grilling in in the Senate and in the House next week. And the interesting part of this is, of course, that this is over bond buying, right, which is essentially the monetization of our debt. Because you have to realize that when they float these treasury securities, this is the debt they issue, somebody has to buy that in order for them to get money. And so a couple of things happen. One, they are a shill bidder in the market. They're buying back their own product at auction. So basically, we're selling our debt and then buying it back through a shill partner called the Federal Reserve, who we then owe money to, who also printed it out of nothing. Interesting, huh? And the real challenge here is how much longer they can allow this type of fiscal shenanigans, the hide the ball underneath the walnut, how long this can go on. I posted an article up there on, on uh, this morning on, on Facebook about from Financial Times about how Bernanke faces this grilling over the bond buying. And what I want you to recognize as you're going through that story is that, you know, the Financial Times speaks in these hushed and deferential tones, awestruck, by the mystery that surrounds this discussion of the Federal Reserve. Which is no more than a private banking cartel that has annexed the entire Treasury, all of U.S. federal policy, all of our international monetary policy, into its own nefarious clutches, and it operates in complete and total darkness. We're left with the decisions that they make, and yet we have no input or say into our own nation's monetary policies. We are currently buying back, and the, and the numbers range between 50 and $80 billion a month of our own debt. Do the math on that, folks. It is a staggering number. We're buying back more than half the debt that we issue. The other half is being bought up by corporations, foreign governments, what have you. And the two biggest holders of our debt are China and Japan. China with about 1.3 trillion, Japan with about 1.1 trillion. Most people don't even know Japan has that kind of debt hold on us, but they do. What we owe is so great, and this is just the the the, the amount of money that's on the books immediate, the, the immediate uh, debt that we have. I mean, if you take a look at our true national debt. <clears throat> It exceeds $200 trillion. That's the total of all that we owe and all that we owe <clears throat> that is unfunded. In other words, that which is accounted for under taxation and that which is committed to but uncollected and probably uncollectable. Because here's the problem. The total amount of the national assets in the United States of America is only about a hundred trillion dollars. And yet we owe two hundred trillion. So where are we supposed to come up with that? I mean, unless we seize the assets of every person, every corporation. I mean, where are we going to get that kind of money?
your amount of debt right now, whether, well, it depends on whether you're a taxpayer or just a citizen because they break it out two different ways. If you're an individual, your tax liability or, or the amount that you actually owe as a taxpayer right now stands at over a million dollars. That's the amount of debt that, that f- to, in order to cover all of these unfunded liabilities and so forth, you're going to have to pay $1.1 million. Just for the $17 trillion we owe, let's forget the $200 trillion we actually owe. Let's talk just about the actual $17 trillion we owe. The debt per person, your child, your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your neighbor, Taxpayer or not, we each owe $53,000. Debt per taxpayer is 150000 What that tells you, by the way, is that only one-third of the nation is paying taxes. Right? I mean, do the math. So taxpayers owe for three. Think of it that way. Taxpayers owe the amount of three persons who are just general population. That means only one in three of us is actually paying the bills. You're liable and responsible for $150,000 right now. I'll bet that most of us who are listening to this show right now you'd have a hard time providing a net value worth of $150,000. Take everything that you own and liquidate it all. Everything you own. Down to the last macaroni in your, in your cabinets. Sell it all. Then pay off all the debt that you owe. And that is your net value. I'm willing to bet that most of you wouldn't make $150,000 appear magically on a piece of paper at the end of that exercise. We are unsustainable. And we are already in default. You're listening to America's Voice Now. You may find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org. You can also find us every day on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. And then you can also find this and every other program at America's Voice Now. I'm sorry, at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. We're going to take a quick break. When we return in a moment, we're going to touch on a couple of other issues that are going on. I want to talk a little bit about this issue of the Justice Department expanding the the Trayvon Martin issue and uh, the absurdity of that position. We'll be right back. From West Plains, Missouri, it's KB.